and welcome to Riverside Crafts. Um, I'm Ray, one of the tutors here and I'm going to show you how I make some of my backgrounds um, for the silhouette st style cards that we have. So these are um, die cuts from the um, Crafters, no, Creative Expressions, um, just bought out. So you, we've got two or three different ones um, and they cut beautifully, I have to say. So they cut really nicely, um, but you do, when you've done a, a silhouette, you want something spectacular to give the colour behind it. So I'm going to explain how I do my backgrounds and what I do to do these ones, because these ones are not done in, they're done slightly differently to normal. Um, I use um, a watercolour ink when I do these ones um, and um, um, some sprays because it gives me a different feel to sort of like the others that I do. So these have all been worked in that way um, and this is the last the last one on here to do this is when I pick up all my waste and use the oddments left over so I'm going to show you how I um, normally work through it so you've seen this book before this is my um, investigating book okay so this is my book investigating different things well I was investigating these watercolor inks which you get from Cosmic Shimmer which is again creative expressions um, we have a range in the shop and they're beautiful colors um if you have the pearlescent ones they need to be well shook um and when you first get them you might even need to stir them with a cocktail stick because there is so much mica in the bottom of them it sticks the ball bearing tight and you really need to get it moving for them to work okay if you have any questions i will go and answer them at the end because i don't tend to have an awful lot um to see i can't really see what's happening on my screen but I'm just going to say hello to everybody who is actually watching and I think I can see somebody let me have a look Alison Short um Carol Cole and Alison no oh Sue Dring so welcome and um, keep watching I hope so this is my Indra investigating book okay so these are the watercolor inks and these are the colors that I've got and this is how they have they go with one drop of ink and one spritz of water this is what happens so they spread out quite nicely this is the pearlescent ones so as you can see there's lots of mica a very much a definite shine here as you can see and then i sort of started to play to see what happens when i mix the two together the pearlescent and the non-pearlescent um and see what like how much water movement they've got in it can you brush them out how do they go what happens when you Add other colours in. So this adding salt. You see the crystal how it sort of gives it like a crystalline effect, which is quite nice. Um, and bits um, again with more watercolour sponged. Um, salt added, but this one has been dried by heat, and you can see sort of like a a, um, a water pattern on the thing here. Here we go. This is the this one's got salt on it again, so you can see a granular effect here. Um, and this one was done with the airless misters on top to help activate it. Another sponged one, but this one done on watercolor card. And then um, again, so you can see how well the colors mix, and you can get some amazing backgrounds. So let's start. Let's start making a mess. For me to make a mess, I better put some gloves on, otherwise my hands are going to be pretty colours for the rest of the week, which is not always a good thing. Now, again, cardstock wise, I'm going to be using this, um, which is a mixed media paper predominantly, um, and I shall be using this for most of it. It does watercolour and acrylic really well, um, and I find that it's easy to use and it tends to flatten out quite nicely so i use this cardstock quite a lot the other cardstock that i will be using is a watercolor card and it is by crafters companion um so i will be using the two and i'll tell you when i swap over so obviously this is the the one this is the mixed media cardstock which is what i've got here so as i said when you're using these you need to really make sure they're shaped and if you can't hear the ball bearing you haven't got it loose enough okay so I'm just going to put a couple of drops of one of these colours on to start off with. Okay, so giving it a good shake. This one is called Purple Twilight. And if I remember right, this one's got is really pretty. And I'm just going to put some drops on dry card initially. So I want you to see how it moves. It doesn't do a lot. It just sits there quite happily until you put some water on it. Okay, and then it will start to 
bleed out. You see how it's bleeding away from it and creating the... So you just sort of... It will spike out. The less water you put around it, the more it will just sort of bleed slowly. So you just sort of put your, your card on. But something interesting happens when you add a non-pelescent colour into the middle of the pelescent. And I just want to show you what happens. Can you see how it just changes it? Look at that. It will. It sort of resists it and pushes it away. If you get directly in the middle, it will change the colour. But if you put it to one edge, it will do this sort of push away resist, which is really nice to look at um, as well and gives you a different sort of feeling for what you're doing. These are the Alice Misters I was saying. Again, by... Um, Cosmic Shimmer. Again, ball bearing in the bottom. If it's not running free, it won't work. And you can make it, make them work with this and give colour coming everywhere. Okay, so this is how they work. So you can get some really amazing colours coming through. You get some nice bleed and you can have a really good play. You can add more water in to move it and give different and water it down, give splots on it to do all sorts of things move the cardstock um, and really play okay so as you can see you can do it quite a lot with it already and that's just literally a couple of spritz and a few drops now if you want to make it to look at the moment you're thinking well I don't, I don't know if that's going to be any good for a background but when I've dried it I want you to see because you don't necessarily need the whole sheet to do something so I'm just going to try and get that greeny yellowy stripe that's come through the middle there because I think that's quite pretty. And I think that would look quite good when it's dried off a bit. Let's get it up there. One of the things that you'll notice is when you put heat on it to dry it, it doesn't change the colour, but it will tr it will change how it bleeds slightly because different bits will dry quicker. So you'll get a different sort of, sort of um, effect come in and you'll get bits that don't cover very well at all and then you'll get other bits that just sort of colour everywhere or go with it and you just sort of take off the excess so I just sort of have a, a wadge of kitchen roll to take off any excess I've got hanging around that I don't really want to be sort of chasing around okay and just dry off a bit around what I'm doing so I'm not getting it everywhere now the other thing that's quite nice is if you when you've got it dry and you put your your over the top of it and you're not if you're not happy with how it looks you can just go back and play with it again and move it around which is quite nice to do so it's not a um a big thing to do so like, here we go one of my this is one of my favorites now at the moment i'm thinking that's not going to make a very good background but when i put my car over it and i look at the bit i might drop off actually that would work really well just there what's going to happen if i turn it that way Yep, yeah, that's not bad. Go there, and it looks like I've got dark clouds coming over the top of something. You know, I've got a twister coming up ahead of me. So you, it depends on where you're going to sit, what you're looking at. So move your um, silhouette around. Don't expect, you know, it doesn't have to all sit in the same place. Okay, so if you look, you can see, look, that's going to look quite stunning behind that. And bits and you can really sort of see the colors coming through and that's going to look really pretty so it doesn't take much to do to get this stunning effect with a silhouette for a silhouette okay but depending on the silhouette it probably won't work see that doesn't really do quite so well with my horse but that's because of how i've got it sort of set because this is coming down here but if i turn it I'm just going to dab that water off that edge there a minute and put it there now it works because I've got my green down the base and I've got this blues all swirling into it so it's it matter it depends on where you look at where you're putting your silhouette and the type of silhouette you're using okay so that's a, a really quick way of doing a basic background with what you're doing one of the other things is when you, is you make your card wet already. Now, if you're going to go on wet onto wet card, I suggest you, you spray the back of your card, turn it over, and then spray it again because your card will lay flat when it's wet then. Otherwise, it will curl up on itself and you 
all your ink will just go everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to put some um, sunsetty colours on for a minute. So I'm going to go with a sort of a rich raspberry jammy colour for some, a bit of an orangey colour I've got here. So I'll put some of that in down here, a bit more orange. There we go. And some of my, and some yellow, I think. Let's put a little bit of yellow in it. So the yellow can go down the base here and a bit up here. Right. Now I'm going to put more water on it. So I really need this to move. And at the moment, as you can see, it's not moving very much. And I'm going to drag it a bit. So I'm going to use my brush. I'm going to drag my colours across because I want it to sort of um, give it a sunset sort of a feel. So I'm dragging my colours across it at the moment just to give me a sort of a, a bit of a bleed, if that makes sense. So that I get this feeling of a sunset. All right. And then I'm just going to let it work for a minute. So we'll see how the colours are sort of bleeding in and where they're moving to. Drop some colours to come down a bit if I want to can bring it in a bit more if I'm thinking that's not actually going to be where I want it let's put a bit more across here and that the raspberry jam is probably a little bit too pink so I'm going to change that one and put some of a different red on it to oh that's the black that's not the color I was thinking that was nearly wasn't it this is the red picked up the wrong jar I'll use this red and see what happens I like the fact they have these droppers you can control what you how much you're putting down a lot more um and, bits. and of course you can add these to spritzers as well so you can add them and make your own spritzers again without too much difficulty there and so i'm just dragging this in i think i'm going to put a bit more yellow in up here because it sort of looks a bit more like i should have some i feel up there so i'm just going to put some yellow in because it will just lighten that off it'll give it a bit more of a sort of a sunny feel right i'm just going to put the heat on it a minute so that the, the yellow will come out a little bit and swirl. Right, one of the things I've found is when I've got a lot of ink on and I want to keep that intensity of colour, if I sprinkle salt where I want the intensity of colour to stay, it will it doesn't move so far because the salt will help absorb it, but also it keeps it there while I'm working. So I'm just gonna put my salt on just a minute, just for a moment while it's doing, and let it just rest for a minute. Off my brush. Okay. Now, at the moment, all you can see, what you can see is that it's not, where I've put the salt across the top here, it's no longer running. Can you see there's no longer ink running all around it? Still is around the bottom, because that's why I haven't put salt on that area. Um, but I'm just, because I've just wanted to keep the yellow sort of a little bit more here, if that makes sense. I'm just going to bring the yellow across there a bit more. Right, let's dry it off a little bit. And I hope you've all got something nice to do for the bank holiday and you've got lots you want to enjoy. And that. Now, this, the horse here, he is one of um, Riverside's dyes and there's another one that I'll be using next week as well, which is one of their silhouette dyes, which work beautifully with these things. So the horse is one of Riverside's dyes, so they're worth looking out for because they're a very good bargain. Um, and I'm going to be using a different one next week as well from their selection um, to show how it works. And I can show you a quick sample of that just before we finish, just to whet your appetites so you can see where we're going a bit more. Right, I'm going to leave that now and let that finish drying on its own. It's still got some ink on it, but it's got a lot of salt on it. So I'm just going to let it dry on its own and see how we go, okay? because I've got the yellow fixed now. I'm not going to lose my yellow. So I'm just going to put that to one side and let that finish off on its own. 
and I'm going to do a little bit on watercolour card because I want to show you how different it mo differently it moves from one to the other. So if I put a little bit of there and a little bit, there you go, that's the two different sorts of card. I'm just going to spritz them and turn them upside down so that I don't end up arguing with the cardstock in a minute. Right, and we're going to use black and blue, so it's like a real dark evening sky. Okay, so not a lot of difference just then, is there? It sort of is what it is. And we're going to go in with, we we'll use a pearlescent one. Just got to get it to mix a bit. Okay, on you. There we go, just starting. Okay. Done. Right. More water to get it moving. Can you see how it sort of it tracks a bit more? Okay, so there's not a lot of difference between the two and how they move at the moment. You can see it sort of how it's traveling quite well from one area to the next. Okay, I'm just going to add a, a little bit of um, a mister in a similar tone so that we've got some more blue to move to. Can you see how that, how even with the, how the mister is making it move as well? So the liquid from that is helping it to do and change as well. All right, so I'm just going to pick this up and move it a bit because I want that. Oh, look at that. Look at the colour coming. Okay, so that's doing quite nicely there. Looks like a tree. Okay, let's do this one as well. I'm going to move it coming down. All right, okay. Let's put some drying time on these things. You might think, oh gosh, she's wasting an awful lot. I've had these inks for a good six months and I've not had to replace any of them yet. Um, I haven't used them. I haven't gone through them. Um, I've not emptied any one of them. They've still got over half in um, and I do a lot of backgrounds and a lot of demo bits. So um, they're gonna last you a while. Right, how are we doing? Not bad. I'm just going to dab some of the water liquid off because I've got a lot on there. And you got to remember an awful lot of that is water as well because I'm putting a lot of water on to get it to move. So it's not all ink. Although it looks like a lot of ink, it's not actually a lot of ink and it's all sort of going nicely everywhere to help me. So that's quite good. Making a mess, as usual. My favourite way to play in the craft room. Right. So as you can see, by comparison, um, that shows you that actually both work really well with the inks. You're not having to worry about your cardstock. So if you've got watercolour cardstock, that's fine. If you've got the other mixed media, then that's fine. So that on both of them, you're going to get an amazing sort of background come up when you're looking. So if you look, you can have a really dramatic sky, evening, night sky um, behind them, which could go. And when you're at this point, it's really cool to actually add in a different colour. 
so if you think actually i want to add something a bit a bit um different i'm going to add a bit of green in and sort of draw it across it don't put it in just sort of put it where you think you might want a bit to be and that and give it a little bit of a different sort of feel so you can add a bit in and drag it over it and just let it sort of sit so you can add a bit in and just drag it across and see what happens like a, like you would do lightning and just let it go and drag it pull it where you think if you want to add some water in go for it you can reactivate it so it's not just because i've dried it it doesn't have to stay like that if i think actually i want it to look a bit different again look by adding putting the water back it wakes it all back up again and the blue will move as well look you see so it's not just going to be the new ink i've put on existing colors will move once you've dried them as well if you add more liquid to the mix so you can change it so if you've done it and you're like oh, i'm not sure i've worn it like that you can change it up so nothing is binnable until it's gone to be brown, basically. Because every if you get, if you mix it too much, you will end up with a, mess, a brown muddy mess. But if you until that point, it's all of it is okay to you. You can sort of play with it. I've not used any pink on this one at all. It was a blue and a black and then the green. But if you look, I've got some pink because I've got it. It's split. The black is split, so I've got pinks coming in it, which is quite pretty. But it hasn't split as much on the watercolour card, which is quite interesting, actually. There we go. And now you can see the lime green, adding that little bit of lime green in, it has really altered how it looks um, and given it a different feel for it to sort of do something as well. So you're not sort of thinking, oh, is that all it's going to do? It's changed it up quite a lot. Okay, so by adding the green in, now when you put your... Um, silhouette across it it looks like you've got the aurora borealis going on in the background quite quite a dramatic night sky happening for him to be driving home a bit so it can change it quite a lot okay gives it a very different feel right so i'm just going to go back to this one for a moment because we did this one right at the beginning if you remember with all the salt on it i'm going to finish drying it now because it's had a while to sit I'm just going to finish drying it off. Salt actually dries into the paper, which is quite nice because it gives you a completely different feel to what you think you're going to get. And gives a, a, a total different feel to the paper. Can you see, I don't know if you can see the, the fact that it's actually dried into the paper. So you've got sort of like a, a crystalline finish to what you're doing. But I just put your silhouettes over the top of it so you can see. Now you've got an amazing sunset that you're waking up to and because you trim these to what you want and where you want them you can make your backgrounds as big as you like the bigger you the more you use and the more colors you use the more bits that you can actually then pull off of what you've made to work so this piece um when i did it was a full a3 piece okay um lots of colors lots of textures in it um, and when i did it it was a full piece but i just pull off the bits that i like on it now chop them up and i've just cut it off where i fancy it and i'm getting i've had some stunning backgrounds that have worked really well um, and i made a great big piece rather than doing my little bit so looking at what you can do it's really easy to do a little bit and get a really amazing finish but one of the things I wanted to I'll just show you how to use your waist up. I know I haven't got it because I've been mopping it up as I've gone along. But I want to show you how to just to do yourself a little brushed background, a uh, sponged background. 
um, put my moon on it. Right, I'm going to wake it up with a, a mister. So I'm going to put a little bit of a, a colour down first. And then I'm going to pick up some colours off of my, my mat with a sponge. Um, which I will have a few of because I tend to keep quite a few bits around. And anyway, so I use my mat like a palette when I'm doing things like this. So I've got my, my, my sponge is damp. I tend to use a natural sponge because I like how it feel how it feels. So I do use a natural sponge when I'm doing it. I'm going to put a little bit of pink coming into it because it just gives it a bit more of a an evening sort of sky feel. I'm just going to be bringing it across wherever I think I want it and just dropping it in. Okay. Now when I've got a bit done, I'm just going to take pick my moon off now because I've got a, I've got a bit that's I don't want it to look that um what's the right word precise with my moon i want to sort of give it so it looks like it's just sort of come off the edge might need to put a bit more ink down in a minute let's have a look yep do a little bit more blue there you go a little bit more blue because if i can just take off the edge there and hide it it just looks a little bit more natural that it's just peeking out behind um, some of the clouds that are happening along here quite nicely. A little bit more pink, I think. Put the pink on, drag it in, and bring it along. Now, if my paper's drying, which it is, because it's quite warm in here today, so I'm drying quite quickly and I don't want necessarily for it to dry as quickly as it is so I'm just gonna be adding a little bit more water to make it move for a bit longer really um, just so it does what I want it to for and that and I'm just basically sort of just going to do some splotches of colour where I think I want them where I don't and go around it so that would be my background and then when I put my silhouette on it my moon can be just above it, shining down, as it is on that one. Or I could have it... Where's me? Get me horses. It can be just coming up behind the tree, which looks quite cute. We could be driving home. And it's just sitting there quite nicely behind it. So it doesn't have to be really nice and neat and sorted if at the end of it you've got it on your mat like i have now if you spritz your mat you can obviously then pick it up and just off of the mat it will cut it will pick up quite nicely and you can pick up your other colors and see what's going to happen and you'll get a piece that you'll think oh i don't know about but actually just leave it let it dry don't do too much to it um, and leave it like that to dry and you'll find that you've got a pretty background that works really nicely behind something sort of watercolory and gentle so i hope that that's given you something different to think of for uh, watercolor backgrounds to go with your silhouette dyes um, and silhouette dyes are one of the best ways things that you can play with to give yourself a totally different feel um, for and make a quick christmas card you know you can't beat making a messy background, leaving it to dry, and then chopping it up, and you've got lots and lots of different backgrounds that you can use on your silhouettes to go with. So here we go again, and then we've got. If I chop this down quickly now, here we go. Let me just cut this one down a minute, cut the excess off it. So we don't get the white everywhere. It's one of the good things about working in my craft room. Everything is within hand's reach. So I don't end up with stuff everywhere. So there's my, my sky now, my silhouette. And... I think I'm going to use this one. I think that would look stunning. And that would be 
my background. So when you've trimmed them all down and you've kneaded them all up and you lay your silhouettes on top, you end up with a finished product that looks pretty spectacular and no one's going to know how you've made it. I hope you've enjoyed that and that you've had lot it gives you lots of ideas to play with. So you've got watercolour inks that are both pearlescent and not a normal. Um, the airless misters, which are brilliant. You do make make sure if you've got a ball bearing in them, you need to be able to hear it for them to spray. And you really need that ball bearing to be free in your jars, otherwise you are not the mic is going to be so thick in it you can't use it it's you'll lose it because you'll end up using all the ink and you'll end up with a load of mic at the bottom that you can't get out so best way is to use it up you can obviously add it to a spritzer and make your own spritzer ink um because they're really really juicy in color um and i hope to see you next week wanted to just give you a quick idea of next week's a quick peek we're going to be looking at um distress oxides next week so and how i um both the sprays and the ink pads so looking at how they make a really nice background as well this is the other die from the riverside crafts again that i was saying about that is beautiful um and this is another craft um creative expressions one um and it looks like fireworks going off behind it so it they are that's for next week's one so come and join me next week for oxides and I hope you enjoyed this watercolour one this week. Take care. Bye-bye.